Hello everyone, thanks for coming this evening. My name is George and I'm in Form 7B. So far, thanks to the amazing staff, I've had a successful transition from primary school to secondary school. So far, my best moment was getting voted in for student council rep of my form. Hi, my name's Izzy, another student in Year 7 within the college. Catmus ensures you that you have the best time that you possibly can. Please welcome your principal, Mr Williams, who will give you further details about the amazing college. Thank you. Thanks, George. Thanks, Izzy. Um, already settling nicely into Catmus, as you can see, just the way we like it. Um, I'm going to start this evening talking about the boring stuff, I'm afraid. Um, we're oversubscribed every year. Um, the good news is this is a great year for you to apply because we're going to take an extra 30 students. Um, we've just had planning permission for this brand new building. Um, we've got £5 million of funding to build it and that will give us another three science laboratories, another IT room and two more technology rooms on top of everything else that you see tonight. We've already started this piece of work um, and part of your tour, if you've not already had it, is through a brand new modern foreign languages area as well. And so what you will see tonight are really first-class facilities. Um, we, last year, we took students from as far afield as Melton um, and Stanford in the other direction. Um, that might change this year, depending on how many people apply, because the vast majority of students gain places based on distance. Um, people who've got a brother or sister here know that they have a higher priority and students who apply Catmans Primary. Um, every year there are disappointed families, often ones with brothers or sisters here because their parents forget the deadline. And the deadline to get your application in is the 31st of October and it must go to your home local authority. If you think Catmus is the right place for your child after everything you see tonight and everything you hear about the college, put us down first. That's the best way to be sure that you will get a place. Make sure you apply to your home local authority. We take per students from about five different local authorities. You must apply to the local authority in which you live. And if you're not sure how to do that, go onto the local authority website and they will give you a link for you to complete. If you're not successful, don't give up hope. We do maintain a waiting list and that does move. Because we are in a military area, there are often base moves, and that does mean some places become free. And so it's well worth, if you're not initially successful, just keeping yourself on the waiting list because things will move. I can't promise it. And then finally, um, there is also an opportunity to appeal, uh, which will also be detailed if you're not successful. However, I hope with the larger number of intake coming in, the vast majority of people who apply for a place will get a place. That's what I would like to see happen. Now, I'm assuming, of course, you want to come to Catmus. Um, and so that might not be the case. So let me try and convince you. Let me talk about what, why I think Catmus is such a wonderful place. Um, first of all, let's be honest. If you live in Rutland, we are very, very fortunate. If you follow the news over the summer, you will have seen that Rutland is the highest performing county in the entire country. So you're not going to go far wrong. If you looked on social media, you might believe what he said, that it's the independent sectors that led the way. However, it was the Telegraph who phoned Catmus to find out why we were one of the very few schools in the country whose results improved last year, despite the pandemic and despite the switch back to real exams following the teacher assessments that have been taking place in the last few years. In Rutland, about 75% of grades were grade five or above. At the college, it was higher than that in those groups of GCSEs that I've listed there. About 79% of our grades were five and above. And we're a comprehensive school, and we're proud of that. And I'll talk about some of the advantage of being a comprehensive school as I go through this speech. But for us, there is no entrance requirement to come here. We serve our local community, and we think we work really well with every single individual to give them the best opportunities. Last year, um, we were visited by Nadim Zahawi. Anybody who follows, follows politicians will know he used to be the education minister. Anybody who follows politics will know there's probably been three education ministers since Nadim visited us. Um, however, he was the first education minister to ever visit Rutland, as far as we're aware. 
and he chose to come and see Catmus College and our little family of schools to find out why the local MB, Alicia Kern, said this was such a great school to come and find about and find out what we do and how we do it. And so if you want to know why you should choose Catmus, perhaps you should listen to the old education minister. Uh, what I've just seen here at Catmus and Harrington, of course, uh, and the primary as well, uh, what they're doing here is exactly what I want to see around the country, is that small family of schools supporting uh, one another, really well uh, managed, and trusting their teachers and their students. And magic happens. You know, they do brilliantly on uh, the STEM subjects, but they also do brilliant art and music and sport. I've just seen the incredible gymnasts here. I've seen the work of the Duke of Edinburgh scheme. I've seen the, the Young Enterprise here. This is a role model. I, this is what I want to scale around the country. And so straight from the education minister, what we do at Catmus is what they want to see around the entire country. He talked about the magic, and I want to talk about what that magic is. For me, it's about developing strong character. Now you might say, what is character? For me, character is straightforward. It's how you behave when your mum's not watching. Do you still pick up the litter? Are you still kind and nice to people? Do you work as part of a team? And when you need to, do you show leadership? Because I think if at the end of your school journey you do all of those things without being asked to, you're going to be a great asset to yourself and to society. And everything we do at the college is about building that character. Now the end result might be some of the best results in the country, but we are by far more than just about those results. We are about the whole child and about the individual child. And the first thing I think a school has to get right is culture. If you went to the sort of secondary school I went to, you would hear bells constantly telling you when, what to do, when to go to places, when to let lessons to finish, and so on. If you went to a school like I went to, when the bells went, the teachers escorted you out of the building and locked the doors. Even on days like today. Areas were out of bounds, and frankly, we weren't trusted. And there are some schools that believe that having children march down corridors in silence is the way to bring them up. That's not our approach. Our belief is the students need space to grow and develop, and sometimes that means they will make mistakes. That's part of the growing experience. And so if a student comes to the college, first of all, they won't hear any bells. That's about the only bell they will ever hear, apart from perhaps the odd fire drill. And what they will find is from 8 in the morning, they can freely enter the building. They can use any of the facilities that you see around the place. And that could be the music practice rooms, or the computers, or anything. Because there are no locked doors at Catmus. We don't lock anywhere. Students are welcome to come in. We trust them. You won't find anybody with any keys as a result. I don't carry any keys. They're not necessary at the college. If something goes wrong in a lesson, somebody misbehaves, we deal very strongly with the individual. Because we won't punish the whole student group just because of the behaviour of one child we'll deal with the individual. One of my favourite student quotes over the years has been that there's no rules at Catmus unless you break the rules, and then there's loads of rules. And that sums us up quite nicely. You won't find also teachers shouting in students' faces because we try to treat students in the way that we want to treat, be treated ourselves. And you also, unusually, for almost any secondary I've ever known, find the staff join the back of the queue and not push to the front of the queue even on the very popular Fish and Chip Friday. Because we believe in leading from the front, by the way that we dress, the way we treat our students, and the way we expect ourselves to be treated in, in return. And what that creates for us is a very calm, purposeful, and happy school. Now, I am not naive. Teenagers get miserable from time to time. But on an average day, if you walked around like I did this afternoon, you would find it very quiet, much quieter than what you're going to experience tonight. This is much louder and much busier than a normal Catmus day. You know, if you've got the time, come back for a tour during the day. It's quite incredible just to see how calm and purposeful it is. 
And you'll also experience, again, our first-class facilities. I showed a recent visitor around. He, by happenstance, he'd been over to America, and he'd vis visited the Google headquarters. And he said, this is so much more similar to the Google headquarters than any school I've ever been in. Because the technology is flooded across the whole of the school, so it's just a natural way for us to work. But it's not just the technology. Whether it's the seats you are sitting on in here, or the seats the students sit on in, in classes, and don't forget, they spend a lot, long time sat on seats. We care and we pay attention to it. So those seats that you will see in classrooms, they cost about £100 each. The average secondary will spend about 20 because our belief is that if you put money on the things that you touch and you see and you feel, you're saying you value your students and therefore they also value what you're doing with them. I talked about us being a comprehensive school. If you go to a grammar school, the curriculum is very academic with very little leeway. For some of our students, that's entirely appropriate and they follow what I would consider a traditional grammar school curriculum. They take the three sciences, they take a language, they take a humanities subject, and then they will top it up with something like technology. For other students, that's entirely inappropriate. They're very practical, they're very hands-on, and we can cater for those students as well. So for example, as a result of the building I've talked about, we've introduced engineering this year. So our more practical students can do that sort of approach. But many students are more like I was. I'm a talented phys physicist, a scientist, I'd hope to think, but I was terrible at English. In a school like this, because we're a comprehensive, I could be in the top group for maths, but then get additional support with my English, which really allows students to thrive and helps that you understand why the results are so strong. It's not just about the expert teaching, the ethos and the culture, but it's also the way we construct, construct the subject and the curriculum to make sure they're a great match for the students. And that's start in year seven, because I'm a great believer in choice. On every Wednesday, students get a choice of what they are going to do. We call it the electives. There's about 100 different electives. Each term, they change. And if I give you some idea of what that's like, I walked around this afternoon, and I went into a marine biology elective, and there was a, a teacher who happens to be a marine biologist dissecting deep sea squid with a class and explaining the evolution of this deep sea squid, which has got one very large eye, which looks up for predators, needs loads of light, and one teeny tiny eye looks down for prey. That's the sort of thing we do in electives, whereas whilst next door was a hair and beauty elective. All happening on the same day. I come down the Heller up staircase, and I had, honestly, I've got now goosebumps, because there was one of our key stage four students, I think she was in year 10, leading 70 students in the performing art elective, teaching them the dance for Legally Blonde, which we'll perform later on in the year. That's what our electives are about, and that's what year seven have already chosen for the, for the rest of the year. They might go horse riding or ice skating. They might go to Peterborough bowling. It's that sort of variety. If they're going on one of our trips, they might join me to learn how to do photography in the dark so we can catch the northern lights. It's that sort of thing, choice, which brings in engagement. They get students excited about being in school, which is why there's so many here tonight. They want to stay, believe it or not. And they really get excited about coming. Um, it sounds daft, but our attendance was like 7 or 8% higher than the national, so far above where the, the rest of the country was, because we focused our recovery not on giving online tutoring, but on the welfare of our students making them happy again about coming back into college, giving them support through our pastoral team and through the tutors who really know them, and getting things like the electives and our trips and visits back running so that we got back to a more normal footing very quickly. The results follow. Um, and to give you some idea, I mentioned about our grammar school stream, about 60 of our students, so about a third left here with an average grade of a seven, which is equivalent to a grade A. Um, on the other hand, I was equally proud, if you read our press release, you would see us celebrating a much broader range of students, and some of our most highest performing students were students who were on our special provision. Because we're equally proud of every student, and what we try to do is construct an experience that embraces their strengths.
you'll see our sports facilities appear on the video. This is our drone, um, often flown by one of our students, under supervision, I hasten to add. Um, and it was done during the summer, hence why it's not so green. And you can't sadly see inside the buildings. I'd strongly suggest, if you've not, go over to the sports hall and have a look at just how immense and incredible the facilities are. Um, and we invest in them. We're about to put another £100,000 into, into refurbishing an old sports hall, which will extend those facilities even further. Over the course of the year, we offer around 20 different sports. I'm not going to list them all now, but if you talk to students, they will talk to you about the sorts of sports we offer. They don't really run that fast, by the way. I may have sped it up just slightly. So I was worrying I'd run out of time on this slide, but I'm, I'm, I'm going on, so I probably won't. Um, I like sport because it goes back to that point about character. There's nothing like losing, is there, and having to pick yourself up and have another go and work as a team to make sure you win next time. That's how you build character. Of course, winning is delightful. And as you can see from the performance table, we generally win, to be fair. And, and this, as Ed, I think, mentions in his speech in a minute, I think this is our 10th year of winning. And so don't worry about losing too much year six. We are looking for new recruits. Um, but I do think genuinely losing teaches you a lot about life and prepares you for some of those hard things that do occur in life from time to time. I've alluded to some of the performance opportunities here. We, we offer around 20 different instrumental lessons. Um, and they are one-to-one -one lessons in our own facilities with specialist music teachers. They often lead to students applying for our music scholarships, which give subsidised one-to-one -one lessons. They give students the opportunities to go and see orchestras or operas and broaden that whole outlook on, on music. Um, we also offer Lambda lessons, which are similar to instrumental lessons, but they're one-to-one -one drama lessons. And they're really powerful for developing confidence, speaking publicly in this sort of forum. You've seen two of our Year 7s speak. That's the start of that sort of journey. All of our students, however, get involved in performance. It starts in Year 7. The current Year 7s are very excited. If you ask them about it, they will no doubt tell you about going to see Frozen on the West End. They won't just go and see Frozen. After they've seen it, they have workshops with the actors. And when they come back into college, the drama and music lessons are about putting that show on. And then your parents are then invited in to watch them perform. For many students, as you can imagine, it really ignites that bug for acting and performance. For me, of course, it's about character again. There's nothing harder than doing what I'm doing now, or George and Izzy have just done, or Ed and Selena will do in a minute. Public speaking is hard. It's not often tackled in schools. We're really passionate about it, and we want to give every student the opportunity to do it. Um, for people who really get the bug, then they can get involved in a show. Last year it was Mo Moana. Selena's going to cringe a little bit, but she was the lead, and she should be very proud. And I'll just show you a quick montage from Moana. I like to dance with the water, the undertow and the waves. The water is mischievous, ha! I like how it misbehaves. And it seems like it's calling out to me, so come find me. Now, that was what we would call a small show, by the way. That's our, our key stage three show, only a couple of hundred students involved. Um, for the big show, we'll have a live band. The students, of course, also do all the technical bits, the lights, the sounds. So there's a whole team of students who are involved in putting on a show like that. And again, building great team working skills and leadership skills. Rutland's quite small. Uh, multum in parvo, they say, much in little. Um, and I think Rutland is very beautiful. I also think it's great to get out every now and again. Um, and that's why we run so many different trips and visits. So um, the, the video, I, I confess, that was me. Um, I took a group of students to Iceland. In fact, I will confess further, I've been now three times, and I'm hoping to go again this summer. It's a fantastic experience. But we do it around the curriculum. It's a photography tour. So although they have fun tobogganing and seeing glaciers and all of those sort of things, they also come back with primary source material for their GCSE in photography. 
whereas this year our geographers are given the option to go to Sicily to study the volca volcanoes down in the southern coast of Italy. Um, we've got um, for netball, if you're interested in sport, we're going to see the um, Netball World Cup in South America. We're doing an expedition to Morocco. We're also doing local trips. Um, these students are down in Cornwall doing photography. There was a history trip to York. There's, there's over 100. I can't go into them all, but what we try to do is really open their eyes and expand what they're thinking about, and also, frankly, um, giving them time away from you. Because, as you know, as good parents, your job ultimately is let them, to let them go so they can be successful in life, and this is part of that journey. One of the best things I think we do outside of the lessons are, is Duke of Edinburgh. Duke of Edinburgh was an award set up by the Queen's late husband to encourage all students to, do, to get out of the classroom, to go outside, have adventures, volunteer in their local community. We put about 3,700 hours of volunteering back into our local community last year. When I say we, our students did. That's a tremendous achievement. But it's also about teaching them new skills, getting lost. There's no mobile phones. They have to cook for themselves. They have to come up with a menu for it. They have to camp out. They're likely to get wet and muddy if they're lucky. But they will come back slightly taller and slightly prouder of what they've accomplished. And if none of that snatches your fancy, all I've done here is try and take all of the different electives, all of the different trips that ran last year, and put them in a big long list. So if I've not already hooked you and said Catmus is a wonderful place, maybe one of these might just grab your attention. Now I've run out of things to say, and it's still going. It, there's, there's so much. And it's still going. I've got you interested. It's good. It's gone now. Um, I talked about character. I'm hoping I've given you a good idea about how we develop character. And it starts on transition day. There's transition. Um, I've, Izzy and George are in that photo somewhere. They were finding each other earlier. And of course, they were also reflecting on the fact they were sat in their primary groups. And if you look at that sea of year sixes as was, they're all sat clustered, generally speaking, around the primary schools that often send their students here. And then there's the odd student who doesn't sit with anybody because he's the only person from that primary school. So we take students from all over. This photo down the bottom is just a few days ago. This is actually, I didn't know this when I took it, honestly. Izzy's in that photograph somewhere at the back. And she sat, stood with Miss Callahan, who's one of our maths teachers. And Miss Callahan will stay with that tutor group for all five years. She's not allowed to leave, I've already told her. <laughs> and if you were really careful when you watch the prom photo, just as um, the students are leaving, wonderful evening, by the way. If ever I feel that, uh, have we done a good job with our students, the prom reinforces it for me. It's a great evening to spend some time with people who are really ready for the next steps. Miss Callahan was in that photograph. Because this will be, the, I think, the third tutor group she will have seen through from year seven all the way through to year 11. Because that pastoral care is really important to us. And by the time they leave, as you can see, we want them to leave as happy, confident young people, really ready for the next steps. So that's my view of Catmus and why you should consider us. But let's not just leave it there. Let's ask um, our head students this year, Ed and Selena, to talk about their experiences. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Catmus College. My name is Ed and I'm joined here with my fellow head student, Selina. And we're here tonight to discuss our personal experiences at the college, to share some of our experiences and to describe just some of the added benefits of being a student here at the college. As I reflect on the five years I spent here at Catmus, it's easy to recognise just how massive the transformation from year seven to year 11 has been and how it has impacted both of us as individuals. We've not just grown in height, well, some more than others, but also in confidence, as we've gone through profound experiences which have shaped us into the proud students we are today. 
In our opinion, trips and visits form a central part of life at Catmus. We all know the value of experiencing things firsthand, and this helps us learn not only new knowledge, but develop relationships with our peers. Whilst COVID-19 limited the amount of trips we were able to go on, last year Catmus made a huge effort to put on a vast array of trips as the country opened up out of the pandemic. I was fortunate enough to go to a performing arts tour to Liverpool in June, where we performed at various venues like the Albert Docks and saw places such as the British Music Experience and Anfield Football Stadium. Sorry if there are any Everton fans in tonight. Of course, how could a performing arts tour to Liverpool not include the, the Beatles? And we were lucky enough to go visit Penny Lane, Strawberry Fields, as well as the childhood homes of Paul McCartney and John Lennon. The college runs an academic scholarship programme where students can apply to receive various opportunities in a range of different subjects. For me, this has involved being a maths scholar in which I've received extra tools such as a scientific calculator. For both Selena and I, the highlight of our trip last year was definitely the trip to the Houses of Parliament in what was a very interesting time in UK politics. This involved sitting in the House of Commons and watching famous politicians debate each other live. We then later put our local MP in the hot seat and gave her a grilling about her views and how she got into politics. As well as equipping us with the tools to be successful inside the classroom, Catmus offers a wide range of opportunities to shine out a bit as well. For me, this is being casted the lead role in our last year's school musical, Moana. Being part of this cast really helped me grow in confidence and collaborate with others enthusiastically and not only develop my vocal skills, but combine them with acting and dancing to create a true performance, enjoyed by many parents, students and members of the public. My chances to shine outside the classroom are quite literally outside, as I'm captain for the school football team. This has not only benefited me in leadership skills, but also providing that extra motivation to the team when needed, and also that sweet satisfaction of a victory over another school. Catmus has been competes in varsity competitions and I'm proud to say for the last 10 years we've won it and we're looking for all of you in the crowd to keep this streak up. Since year nine I've also been completing the Duke of Edinburgh award in which I've been volunteering at places such as Rutland Athletics Club. Skills such as teamwork and decision making are a vital part of this as for example choosing the correct directions on an expedition is the difference between getting lost and getting chased in a field by cows Trust me, wasn't my finest moment, but lesson learnt. We are fortunate to have here at Catmus a large group of teachers who are willing to give up their weekends in order for us to achieve this award, which is reflective of the whole Catmus experience, really. But don't just take our word for it. Take tonight to explore what's on offer in person and speak to them yourselves. As we have reached the end, we'd like to thank you all for coming and listening to our experiences, and we encourage you to see as much of Catmus as you can because it truly is an outstanding school. Thank you.